Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to possibly one of the last episodes of RPT. <laughs> one of the last episodes of RPT because um, I have offended my producer. Producer Rob, he saw me rocking this Mexican-American shirt. He's like, oh, I didn't know you made those in black. I'm like, yeah, big dog. And he's like, okay. Yeah, okay. You know what size I wear, homie. Yeah, never got one. Oh, they're in storage. Oh, cool, cool. It is what it is, big dog. But hey, also, chingobling.com. It's a good point. Good, good time to mention that. Chingobling.com forward slash store. Hey, man, all good things must come to an end. Psych! It's your boy, Chingobling. <laughs> <laughs> you know you know the haters got happy when I said oh, that, Oh, I know, bro. right? They'd be like, what, it's over? They're like, fuck yeah, we silenced him. No more docenas de tamales? Ya se caron las docenas. Uh, what episode number is this? Good question. Don't worry about that. Don't worry <laughs> about that, y'all. We just finished interviewing uh, the homie Nino America, and uh, we just want to uh, let y'all know. Tune in. We're gonna do. We're gonna uh, riff right now. I'm gonna tell you about these tour dates and all that. Tell you about our Fourth of July. Uh, but stay tuned. We got a special guest, Nino America, a little bit later in the show. I am Chingo Bling. We got producer Rob in the building. Thank you. Thank you. Episode sixty eight, by the way. 68, numero 68. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Special thanks to the patrons. Uh, special thanks to everybody um, that said what's up at uh, Dan Crenshaw's pool party. That's what I call it. You know, we over here at Dan Crenshaw pool party. Mm -hmm. uh, but, I, but I'm a stand-up comedian. Let me tell you about my tour dates, where I'm going to be. These are freedom rallies slash stand-up comedy shows. We're headed to Ontario, California, July 14th. First show sold out. We had to add a show. Cali, all my patriots, thanks for the love. Oxnard, California, July 15th. We're going to be over there at Levity Live. July 16th, beautiful Waco, Texas. Beautiful. So beautiful. Uh, July 17th, Midland, Texas. Uh, shout out to uh, Nino America. He said he got a whole VIP section. He's bringing the whole Tolos, Tolos Maga way. The squad. For sure. Phoenix, Arizona. Ticket link will be live real soon. July 25th. Irvine, August 11th. San Jose, August 18th. Denver. August 27th through the 29th, El Paso, September 9th through September 11th, Brea, September 15th, Addison, Texas, October 7th through the 10th, San Antonio, October 14th through the 16th, and Houston, November 5th through the 7th. Uh, I need to check when I'm going to go win this award for the short film. Yeah, let's talk about it. Look, man, I was in this short film. Um, shout out to my homie, Tim. Uh, he's a director. He hit me up. And we did a film called The Cause of Death, a short film. And it's, and it's um, nominated for Best Short in Texas. It's the uh, Deep in the Heart Film Festival. And guess who was nominated for Best Performance in a Short Film Drama? John Leguizamo? Chingo Bling. <laughs> a motherfucking freedom-loving patriot. Not no motherfucking sellout. Uh, I'm very disappointed with a lot of our Latino influencers and leaders, uh, Latino Hollywood. Uh, George Lopez didn't post nothing. Y'all know I like to pick on George, man. Um, For the fourth? Yeah. He, uh, let, let me go double check. Let's, let's double check. Be let's... Before I get caught lying. <laughs> yeah, before we go in. Uh, I'm starting to think, okay, for one, he just has the Mexican flag in his bio. That's it. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's no post at all America-related at all Eva Longoria says something about y'all have a good long weekend big trick mm. what you mean long weekend it's in, it's independence day you know in this episode that people are going to start listening to here in a bit with Nino uh you mentioned some something in there that was interesting where it's like he asked you it actually might have been after the podcast I don't know yeah. of, of why you did it like why you started talking about this stuff and you reply to some people right now and for a while now it's been like that you have a moral obligation mm -hmm. like you know you're not you're not about enriching the cartels you're not about xyz all good points mm -hmm. all valid real genuine points of why you, you talk about the stuff we talk about it why you're you know very passionate about it and uh it, it seems like they these people that you've mentioned these the Latino Hollywood they rather just go with what's been working and working, and they don't want to disrupt that, you know, their streams of revenue. They don't want to disrupt, you know, the status quo. Mm -hmm. They don't want to, you know, ruffle any feathers. Like, we good. I don't give a fuck. You know, if it's not transparent or genuine, I'm going to do it anyway. Well, uh, I'm not a mind reader, so I speculate. I am. I'm a medium and a mind reader. <laughs> I speculate that they're just leftists. I, I believe that um, they probably just believe the mainstream leftist media, um... Maybe they truly believe that America is not worthy of, of, of appreciation or celebrating. Right. Uh, I mean, right? I mean, why why else would you not post anything? I get it. It's their social media, but they're posting about everything else. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not like they're just, well, Chingo, maybe not everybody's obsessed with social media like you. But 
I, like I said, I'm not a mind reader. It, it, I just find it funny. Yeah. You know how you know how like chicks be saying, "I find it funny." I, I find, find it funny, funny that you did not post anything about Independence Day, about respect, or gratitude of, of living in the freest, most beautiful country in the world. Goddamn America, you know, America. You know, so it is what it is, man. You know, that's that's my speculation. Speaking of the Fourth of July, uh, you got to party with old Dan Crenshaw. Huh? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get to meet Dan Crenshaw, but I met uh, Benny Johnson briefly, and a whole bunch of fans, man. A whole bunch of Latinos that were out there, like, hey, dude, we listen to the podcast, or hey, dude, nice. follow you, or we've been following you. And one dude, uh, we met a uh, one couple, uh, Eddie and Candy, and. Um, Yo, he was schooling me about a lot of interesting stuff. He, we were talking about communism, and he was telling me about um, how in Russia, the way they brainwash the youth is they would take a classroom and have two little plants and said, okay, kids, God's going to take care of this plant, and then we, you know, the state, us, the government, mm. the people, are going to take care of this plant. So obviously, God didn't come water his plant because it's inside. God didn't come over here and move it closer to the sunlight. So it looks like we're going to replace God with the state and government. And they did a lot of little social engineering brainwashing so that they replaced God with the government. Basically, like, That sounds like North Korea. Yeah, and it sounds like what they're doing to us right now, in my opinion. Jeez, that is... Uh... So some very interesting convos in the pool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah what do you, you and you're your, splashing around yeah. there's fucking music playing you got your white claw and you're just talking about communism and yeah podcasting podcast and, but yeah you know uh eddie was like dude it made my heart so happy he's like dude i've been listening to you forever and um you know when you were a lefty you know i still i still listen to you he's like but he's like dude I, my heart was so happy to hear that you just woke up to the bull crap and saw that you know a lot of the news is just narrative it's framed in a certain way it's it's persuasive and misleading and and i was like thanks bro sorry it took me so damn long <laughs> i was too busy working in the trump era a lot of people do say that like man i was a big fan of you before but i'm an even bigger fan now and you know what i just made an announcement on my facebook and instagram where i told people hey guys my hand is getting tired of blocking everybody like it's really a pain and i just told them like if you're just a troll a hater if you don't we're not jiving we're not vibing right now just unsubscribe and follow. It'll just make both of our lives easier. You won't have to see me. I won't have to block you. So the number didn't really go down much. So I think everybody's like, I'm just gonna stick around. They're about it. I think they're they're turning. They're they're looking at things your way <clears throat> more and more. I think as yeah. we put out content. I know some people think I'm crazy, but I've always been slightly thrown off. That's a hundred percent true. Yeah, I'm a little crazy just in a different way now. But we all follow people that we don't necessarily agree with, but we follow them for the fun of it. You know, it's just like, where is this person going to go next? But these days, I have a hard time. If anybody's like overtly anti-American and leftist, and sure, I can't. I yeah, can't. I just can't, can't consume Th it. And this is this is why, Rob. I believe that we are at war right now i believe there's an economic war um you know information war culture war i literally believe that we're under attack you have these cultural marxists trying to do a cultural revolution they're trying to break down the nuclear family um there's just so much happening i believe our country's under attack even from that bioweapon that came out that lab mm. number one um I, I believe personally there was some shenanigans in them, you know, the November 3rd mm -hmm. joint, you know, when people couldn't put a little ballot in a box and then some shenanigans happened. We needed to wait like three, four days so they can go print what they needed. Um, it was like a week. Yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. So given that I believe we're at war and we're under attack and other countries are, what is it, licking at the chops? What's the word? Uh, Biting at the chops. Chomping at the bit. Chomping at the bit. I was close. Given that I feel that we're under attack. Licking at the chip. You know, what? licking at the chops. Biting at the chops. I don't know. What is it? Chomping at the bit. Yeah. Um, given that I believe that, I feel that now more than ever, it's time to pick a side. Meaning, you got to either you down with America or you ain't. I know it sounds very like, oh, Chingo, you can't force patriotism. You can't tell people like it or leave it. And... You know, it's okay to love our country but hate our government. And, you know, they try to, like, find a way. Yeah, but genocide. Yeah, but slavery or whatever. Um, I believe now's the time 
where you got to pick a side. Like, are you down with it? Are you down with it? Or are you not? Because <laughs> we are under attack. We are at war. That's my opinion. I think some people are just on autopilot and they don't really see it like that. They're just like, oh, do, do, do. It doesn't matter who's the president. I'm just going to still got to go to work. I'm just going to mind my business and, you know, just ignore it all. Well, guess what? Politics affects you. It's going to affect your personal life. Everything the CCP is working on right now, I guarantee you, will affect your personal life and your child's future. The elites of this country are systematically crushing the u.s dollar rob they spending they printing up trillions of dollars they up to yeah. like 15 trillion they uh 5.9 for infrastructure 1.2 trillion for that another 2 trillion for this it's like way over 10 trillion uh yeah we're gonna talk a lot more about that in the future we have a lot of guests in july let's just mention that to to, to fans right now we have a lot of i mean you know obviously at the on this podcast i think every week Every week we have at least one, if not multiple, guests lining up. Yeah, so we'll be, that'll be good. yeah, that'll be some of the conversations, uh, things that are going on in the schools, you know, the economy. I'm excited to talk about it. Yeah, many many guests. Y'all just stay tuned, y'all. Stay tuned, and also make sure y'all tune into the Chingo Chats. All the patrons, a certain tier, get mm -hmm. access to that. And we're gonna do our health challenge, and um, it starts. It started yesterday, and when I mentioned it earlier, you're like, I ain't even got my watch. I got to catch up. What is going um, on? <sighs> All right, look. Did you break it in the pool? I've been in sit. No. Okay. I feel like past couple of days, bro, I've been in situations where I've been like cooped up in the house or in a situation where I can't even get steps. Like, mm. for example, <clears throat> um, I was at my sister's the other day with my daughter, and I forget what errands Mighty Soul was running, mm -hmm. but I'm just literally there on the couch visiting family like okay. all day long. And I'm like, I ain't getting no steps. It's been raining every damn day. It has. Um, haven't had a chance to hit the gym. It's just, it's a shit show. But that's part of being human. And that's part of the reality of what things can you put in place that are sustainable. Yes. And that's why we're we doing a steps challenge. Uh, if you want to join, hit us up. Patreon.com forward slash Red Pill Tamales. Be a member of the Tia. Shout out all my Tias and Theos. And, um, and, you know, we're also talking about health and fitness and wellness and all that yeah there's gonna be a lot of other challenges we're gonna build upon the steps challenge you know hydration strength training all the other stuff all the stuff that you know lets us clear our minds from politics at least once once a year i suck at hydration as well i saw they brought that in here usually <coughs> don't bring that in here. i put a little bit of cayenne pepper in this one <coughs> did you really yeah don't ask me why <laughs> Because I read in an old book that herbal uh, herbs like uh, cayenne helps uh, fat loss, weight I heard, loss. I heard chorro is good for, uh, yeah, <laughs> weight loss. <laughs> As, actually this is a good a good time to mention i've been talking about doing uh my own podcast again i think i finally uh, established it I, i'm gonna go with um this will help so every week i'm gonna be talking to people and uh, the whole theme is gonna be that this is gonna help with this will help with xyz so this will help with understanding finances this will help with understanding the constitution this will help with whatever it is so having had podcast so when i started the original podcast that i started i was 21 oh wow i'm 31 now so in that in that decade I met a lot of cool people, did a lot of cool things, went to a lot of cool places. I feel like if doing it now in my 30s, like really having refined that craft for so many years and met a lot of people, it, I will be able to offer more to people that listen to it. I also fucked up by not doing a lot of video back in the 2010s. I just, it wasn't a thing to me at least. Instagram and Twitter and all that shit, it wasn't so video heavy. And now, if you do something like this and don't have video, you're, you might as well just be running into a wall, you know? I have, speaking of Twitter and video, I always have a hard time uploading a clip a video clip to my twitter it doesn't matter if <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's out my camera roll it doesn't matter if i ripped it off of instagram it doesn't matter if it got saved i think the only shit it lets me post video wise is um a saved video off tiktok that's it it always rejects it like i'll show you when we get off air. weird all right well let's check it out but yeah so um I expect that here uh, in July and next week or so. It's got to get, you know, you got to have it approved by iTunes, Spotify, all that jazz, and then it'll be up. But there's an Instagram. It's, it's at the, uh, this will help. So T I H S L L help. This will help. Uh, yeah. So definitely want to chat to you about it. Turn the tables completely and uh, wait. Interview this style. will like T H I S L L. This will like this will help. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, this will help. Fuck with it. You'll fucks with it, I yeah. Fucks with it. It's gonna be good. It'll be under the umbrella under the umbrella of RPT. So you know, I don't know if you guys know. I don't even think Chingo knows. We're starting a production company. It's RPT right. Productions. Come on, <laughs> shit. It's news to me, but I love it. <laughs> All 
Uh, Muddy Souls Podcast is also under that umbrella. Her Lounge Podcast. Awesome. Uh, Chingo Chats is under that umbrella. Hell yeah, it's kind of like your mom's house. Exactly. YMH. YMH. Come on, Rob. Come on, man. See, man, Rob is an entrepreneur, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. So I got these little quick videos before we get into Nino's podcast. I don't know if it's going to help his ratings or if it's going to hurt, but we have to play these two because uh, I saw him going around. I ain't seen him, but I figured maybe you can have a couple of uh, laughs at him. What is it? Well, first up, we got your girl. Nancy Pelosi. Well, she got it. Here we go. Really short. Link of Lincoln Memorial. The, uh, bo- uh, the, uh, what is it? Now I'll, I'll read Link of oh, Lincoln no, Memorial. Dude, she just, the, does she have a stroke? Uh, bo- uh, the, uh, sometimes, man, it? you know, sometimes <laughs> them THC vape pens, <laughs> sometimes them vape pens hit, hit different. The, the, the caption is, this is 100% real. I guess this was from a, a speech today, yesterday. Mm. Well, in all fairness, we need a little bit more context. Well, in all fairness, she's 100 years old. With all fairness, she's also a multimillionaire because she be knowing what to invest in the stock market because like when Biden was going to make electric cars a thing, she's like, go buy some Tesla stock. So she be knowing she, Dude, she ain't that stupid. Yeah, we need to do an episode just on how much money she's made. She got buku millions off of being in public office. Here we go. Listen, Milano, everybody's favorite left. What does that say? Read that. Reminder, the United States was founded on the unlust unjust treatment of native americans africans and other peoples of color this is all it is oh jesus christ is there more i am not even worth reading okay well look here man look i normally don't use um the b word and things (laughs) like that but this old kooky ass loony ass biatch (laughs) Uh, she has man. She she was on Who's the Boss, right? She was like my little crush. Oh, know? dude, she was my little crush. She from was Be- on uh, Who's uh, uh, not Bewitched, uh, the Charmed. Uh, she was on Charmed. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Well, when she was on Who's the Boss, man, I was a little youngster. Of course, and, I mean, she's know, still look good. Look I at thought her. she was a little cutie patoot. No, I think she fell off. I think <laughs> she looks. She looks. She first of all, look how big her forehead is right there. <laughs> hey, man, it's a filter. She has too many filters. Yeah, you're right. They're all um, filters. And I believe she has brain damage. I believe she's watched too much leftist media and it kind of broke her brain remember she's the same woman that's hijacked the me too movement from rose mcgowan rose mcgowan started the me too movement when she was talking about um harry weinstein yes harvey 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 weinstein and Lisa milano ran with it she was uh dating or married to a a, a head executive at caa the Mm -hmm. agency and they hijacked it and she used it to try to like protest uh, Justice James Kavanaugh. Yep, yep. yep. And um, but when Biden got accused by Tara Reid, Brett she, Kavanaugh, but yeah, oh yeah, Brett Kavanaugh. She, uh, Lisa Milano went from believe all women to well, you know, yeah. Sometimes bitches get fingered in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when you you know shit, you know Joe, Joe Biden could do what he wants to do. <clears throat> yeah, you let Ro- him do it. Rose, who's also Rose McGowan, was also on Charmed, and also. A- uh, an odd looker i might say she's kind of odd looking but i don't know she's also very she's gone off the deep end several times on on different political you know points or whatever it's it's gotta but, be tough when you're that famous like but this. rose mcgowan though even though even though she's kooky in her own way mm-hmm. in, in the opposite spectrum yeah she speaks out a lot about like sex trafficking totally. human, human trafficking yes um hollywood hollywood yep. These little pedophiles in Hollywood, um, elitist, globalists. She calls out the Democrats and she calls out the hypocrisy of the Me Too movement where Democrats, um, they turn a blind eye every time a a Democrat politician gets accused of a Me Too. So we got to be careful with that Me Too shit because you don't want to go around accusing men of stuff with no evidence, no proof, no nothing. Yeah. um, I will say this for the next episode, but did you see the Karen movie? The trailer? Yeah. Yeah, that bullshit. <laughs> okay, never mind. Then you saw it. Yeah, it was terrible, man. <laughs> um, not an award-winning act, you know, role like yours. Yeah, it's, she, they not nominated for a, a Texas Film Award, short film, best performance in a drama. I'll tell you that. I tell you what, you're not going to win. You're not going to come down here to the Lone Star State and win one of these best performance in a short film drama. You're not going to do that. 
and a fight come with that. And you're going to smell my cologne if you come down here trying to run that run up after the mouth. What kind, of, what kind of cologne you wear these days? I do not wear cologne because I get headaches. Oh, okay. Yeah, that should give me wow, a headache. Wow, weird. It gives me a headache, bro. You rock you rock cologne? Yeah. Lacoste, you know, 12-12. It should don't give you a headache? No, but we light a candle every every podcast. But that's delicious. Awesome. That's Twin Candle Co. It absolutely is. You know, you can find that online. What's the website, right? TwinCandleCo.com. I think we need a promo code for RPT. I think you're right. I think you're right. We got to set that up. Yeah. <clears throat> but um, before I forget, man, I know we, we talking in circles, but- Fourth of July. What did you do? Independence Day. Independence Day. Went to my folks. You know, they got land and stuff. You can pop fireworks. So my nieces and nephews and the kids all went out there, barbecued, kind of just did the good old, you know, Southern thing. It was a good time. Family played a couple of board games, had some food. Great. Uh, chatted, had a had a gla- glass or two of uh, some bourbon and that was it. Okay. Yeah. Glass or two of that burb. Yeah. Speaking of fireworks, um, Snow the product. You familiar with Snow? Love right? Snow, yeah. Yeah, I've been knowing Snow for a long time and... um on her Facebook, she caught some heat because she basically said something like, hey, y'all, I'm paraphrasing. Mm-hmm. Hey, y'all don't be popping fireworks because y'all going to start fires. Y'all going to burn down half of California. <laughs> um, it's illegal. It's, it's not allowed. And plus, you're scaring dogs and just let, leave it to the professionals. And she said, I think she said, and you're scaring people with like PTS or something. And um, I guess she must have got bombarded in the comments like mm. first of all it's a tradition and how you going you know i don't know if they hit her with the anti-american or it's independence day yeah. or what but it seems like she got a taste of backlash she probably just so used to people being like oh my god you're so pretty you rap so good oh my god yeah. you're so talented way to rep la raza oh my god proud latina like praise 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 and then all of a sudden it's like hey look here <laughs> let me find out your political views and welcome to the club, Snow. You're getting a little taste of, uh, taste of the medicine, a uh, taste of what Chingo Bling goes through every day. Damn, man. I wanted to pull up real quick if I could find it. There was a video of a lady freaking out. I don't know if you've seen it yet. She's like in her... Oh, she's... <gasps> yes. In front of her driveway. Did you see that? Yeah. Bro. But I need some context on that. The context is she didn't want to pop in the fireworks. I know, but maybe it's because they're doing it right in front of her house. Maybe they've been doing it for hours. Maybe they're blowing up big shit, like big, big, M, what are the M80s or... Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying. The one little... Pspa. I mean, it fits my narrative. It does. That she's a Karen and she's anti-American. You're right. But, you know, in all fairness, the same way we defend Trump, we got to defend these leftists when we don't get enough context. <laughs> you're right. You're right. But still, if you just watch the video, everything you said, you're celebrating. It's got to be big and bad. You got to be fucking, you know, explosive. You got to be a little bit obnoxious on 4th of July. She didn't like it. Man, Dan Crenshaw's event was lit, literally. Uh, they had a dude f- parachute in. <laughs> With the flag, like, landed in the water. America. Nice. Um, lot, you know, kids, you know, my, my baby had a good time. Uh, my daughter and my niece were just out on the floats and stuff. And um, they had like a little laser show at the end. They had great music. Uh, a lot of patriotism, a lot of flags, a lot of freedom. All right. Um, and I dropped a new single. It's called Freedom. So I would love to shoot a music video for that. Maybe... What I'll do in the meantime is like take footage on the road Mm -hmm. and compile it into a a little something. That might have been the best place to do it too at a Dan Crenshaw pool party. And all I had was my cell phone, but I I did my best. Nice. Yeah, but it was lit. Cool, Uh, man. Brianda was there. Yeah. She was a guest on Mighty Souls podcast. Yes, I saw her. You saw Benny, Benny Johnson. I saw that Fox reporter was there that, that, you know. Ivory Ivory Hecker. 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 Uh Yeah. Uh, And some other people that were like, all right, cool. Like. People I, people I didn't even follow or know, but they were in the conservative world, I guess. I was like, that's what's we, up? we might have to get Ivory uh, on here just to see, get a catch up on like what happened, what what transpired out of that. Yeah, what happens after you get logo let go from Houston Fox Twenty Six? Yeah. All right. Well, Come let's uh, introduce our guest again. If you I can, know. if you can follow him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll try my best, man. Uh, without further ado, uh, a patriot that's online. Uh, he goes live. He posts content. He's all over social media. He's shadow banned. He be having to make all kind of backup pages. He's a fellow Texan. Y'all know a lot of California Democrat Latinos. They it's like their brain doesn't know how to compute. Uh, 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 like the, he calls himself King Nopal. Yeah. Like somebody that you know Mexican as fuck features, and they just don't understand how somebody could possibly i mean i was like that for a while i couldn't understand like what what do y'all see in these people but um 
I think he's doing great work. He's definitely spreading the word, uh, you know, Christian. And he's, he's, I believe he's red-pilling people because he's entertaining. And if you stop and listen to some of the stuff that folks on the right, especially Latinos and Latino conservatives, um, it, it might start to make sense. Yeah. Once you get, get past all the Trump hoaxes, I think you might actually relate and some of it might make sense to you yeah you can totally tell that he, he comes from a very good place like he's very genuine about what he's talking about he believes it and uh it's, it's got all good intentions yeah absolutely so without further ado representing midland texas south side midland west texas ladies and gentlemen get ready nino america Sass. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, hey man, we just gave you a, a great introduction. We pre-recorded right before this, but we have the MAGA mullet mafioso, Mr. Hey, let's go. Mr. Nino America, the crude oil hunter in the building. Hey, what up, what up? What's up, brother? Thanks for joining us, man. Man, it's an honor, bro. Thank you for having me, guys. Uh, gentlemen, uh, it's an honor from West Texas. Thank you hey, uh, for uh, inviting me. Yeah, dude. Hey, I, I got to give you props, man. You're very entertaining. Uh, when wow. you when you go live, uh, me and my wife make sure we we click and, and watch what you got to say, and you be calling people weenies. And <laughs> <laughs> I, I love all the vocab and uh, Amen. and you don't hold back on your patriotism. You go all in, all out. I think the first time I saw you was um, when they were roasting me on the Food's Gone Wild. You know the uh, you know the cholos for Biden. Yeah, that, I can't that, stand them weenies. Well, you know yeah. them, you know them weenies over there, the cholos Haters. for Biden. Yeah, they think that every Latino got to be a Democrat or something like that. Um, they were roasting me on there, right? When uh, when I came out the Trump closet, when I told everybody I voted for Trump, and then I think I had seen you on there, and uh, they had taken a clip. That was you, right? It was a clip where you said, uh, like I denounced my brown skin. <laughs> yup, that was me. That was me. They they shared me a couple of times, but I remember that time. Man, it went viral. Man, wh <laughs> how, what do you think it is about some of, some of the pages like that? Like, do you feel like they're just closed minded, or how do you think they view us? Nah, bro. You say that they want us to be anti Trump. I think they're anti American. You know, um, I wanted to touch on this, bro. You know, um, I feel like our identity has been stolen. And I tell them all the time, bro, and, and, and I hope they see this and they get jarred by how they see me because, you know, this is not the, it's like an anomaly, right? Of, of you know, cara de nopal, you know, I call myself King Nopal, you know? So um, I think that they hate America because they've been brainwashed. And I tell them our identity has been stolen. When I found out, bro, basically, this is what I believe. I don't know if y'all even agree with this, but I, I don't call myself a Mexican, okay? I don't call myself Latin, Latino, Latinx, none of that. I call myself just an American simple and plain. Mm -hmm. And I believe that a lot of us have been brainwashed into believing that we are, you know, uh, citizens of Mexico or we have to have allegiance to Mexico. Yeah. I, my parents weren't born out where they're born here. I was born in Texas. So basically, I just think that our identity has been stolen by people, uh, by Democrats and Republicans yeah. have brainwashed us to have allegiance and hold, you know, loyalty to another mm -hmm. country. They don't care about us. And why should Mexico care about us? I mean, this, I don't got nothing against them, yeah. but we're Americans. And I believe that, you know, we, we, we got our identity stolen. And how much more empowering would it be if our people realized who they were? Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, so I think it is it's just a, it's just a brainwashing of yeah. them uh, hating this country when they should be grateful for living here. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that. You know, my parents are from Mexico. Yeah. So same. And, and same with Rob, uh, producer yeah. Rob. Um, and you know, I believe Mexico is a beautiful country, beautiful history, beautiful, Amen. beautiful people, beautiful culture, food. Um, you know, but you know, I go over there try to do comedy, and they're like, "No way, you're American." Like they look at yep. me like pocho. So yep. I guess to to emphasize what you were saying, I feel that our, you know, because we. Um, we have a, a respect for for the roots and and, uh, and that country. I feel like not only was it our identity hijacked, but I feel that mm -hmm. they take our emotions and use them against us. Kind of like, hey, you, Rob, you like Mexican food, huh? Right. You like where your parents came from. You you think Mexico is a beautiful country? Well, vote Democrat, Joe Biden. You know, play Despacito, and it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. They, that's the okie doke. Because you know what's crazy, Nino? When I went out there to Mexico to do some comedy in Spanish. Um, I realize that there's a lot of right wing stuff and left wing. There's conservatives over there and there's liberals. And a lot of them, man, you should see how they treat their immigrants. Uh, they yeah. treat their, they treat yeah. the Hondurans. Ooh, them Hondurans, they got tired yep. of them. They're like, man, y'all, this is what the, this is what the cab driver told me. He said, 
they realize that the American dream is no longer pass through Mexico, make it to America. They said they realize that the real dream is pass through Mexico, stay in Mexico, stay and take advantage of the Mexican people. Oh, wow. So they, they treat their immigrants worse than America. What part of Mexico were you in? Uh, we went to Monterrey. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, bro, I heard about that. That They, they, they treat them pretty bad, too, and they don't like them being there. And uh, I've, I've heard the same thing, bro, from people that are from there and whatnot. So it's kind of crazy. It's, it's kind of, you know, it's wild. Let, let me ask you, Nino. Um, Go ahead. Were you raised uh, conservative or Republican, or were you Democrat at one point? No, nah, well, check this. This happened to me. I'm gonna give a quick spill, an introduction to anybody that doesn't know who I am. Basically, I'm from South South Side Midland, Texas, um, and um, I want to hit my button over here. My, I got a applause button over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm clapping myself over here. I'm used to it. Yeah. It, South Side. Yeah. Do your thing, man. Press them buttons. Hey, bro, I'm gonna tell you real quick. Ching, I want to tell you, bro. I, I, I salute you, bro, because I told my wife the other day when we saw you coming out for Trump and everything, bro. I, I told my wife, I, I feel sorry for Chingo <laughs> because, bro, you like have it all. You know what I mean? You're like a household name in my hood. You're a household name. And, you know, I know how it is, bro. It, your people will turn on you. And for people to come out for Trump, bro, it's not. I don't know why you even did it, bro, to be honest. I told my wife, why did he do it for? And everybody says, even on my lives, they said because he loves America. You know, he loves his country. So I do salute you, bro, first and foremost, because it, it's, I'm not going to say it's lonely. Well, bro, we get a lot of blowback for for being patriotic and being grateful to live to live here. So mm -hmm. I just want to say that up front, bro, that I do uh, respect you. And, sure. and I, you know, it's awesome bro, what you did. And when I first seen you come out, it was man. I sent it to my boys because my boys, I'm a Christian, but my boys, they're still in the hood or whatever. But, you know, they, they're maggot out, too. You mm -hmm. know, I got to them, but I sent them the videos. I think they tagged me in them. My bro, my big brother, Spank, he watches you on your uh, uh, your Red Pill podcast. He, mm -hmm. he watches all of them. Word. And whenever you came out, bro, I, I sent it to my people or they even sent it to me and tagged me and whatnot. And it uh, yeah. it really helped, bro, or really helped open eyes. It's like, damn, is this Chingo Bling, if he's, you know, trumped out, I mean, just imagine the implications. So I do salute you on that, bro. And Southside Midland, you know, we got your back and we For respect sure. you. Came with you come on the 17th. But I digress. I'm from Southside Midland, Texas. I was an ex-street dude. You know, uh, I was in the street since 13 till about my life changed, 29, when I met a man named Jesus. And uh, I got born again. And my whole life, I was I never came to be Democrat, but uh, I was basically growing up in the oil field and I was I would be in the oil field working, but still, you know, acting a fool in the street. And uh, I was always basically conservative on my life. I think a lot of Hispanics, that's how we are. We're, we're raised with them kind of values. And um, yeah, I guess when I got born again, that really helped change a lot of my ways, which it made me solidify my my um, my values, what they really are. You know, and I stood for them. That was a difference. But my whole life, it was basically a conservative upbringing, even though I didn't know what it was or I didn't even you know, we didn't care about politics. And then when Trump came through, you know, I just you know, I was just like, man, I was on it. I really like Trump. And it, and with Trump, it helped wake a lot of people up. And that right there helped uh, solidify, you know, conservatism in my mind, being patriotic, what it was about to love the Constitution, stand for your rights, you know, stand for certain rights and uh, not back down. So that's what happened to me. I was a street dude. I uh, got born again and I was raised conservative, conservative all my life, but it didn't really solidify. You know, I didn't really understand everything until Trump came in. And then I started like, you know, researching and finding out what, I, what, what it was all about. And Trump helped solidify my uh, hardcore stance that I have now. For sure. Y'all notice you be having to uh, have like um, backup pages. Have you been like, what's Dude, the word? Deep Nino, platform? Let me tell you right now. So his wife and I were doing a podcast just before we started this one. And um, you came up on the podcast and we're talking with her and her co-host. And we could not find your page anymore. You can type it all out bang. exactly the yep. way that you have it. But you have a backup page, right? Is it Nino America 1? Uh, I got about three of them, bro. That's the only one that would pop up was Nino America one. Yeah, that's my that's yeah. Go ahead, bro. My bad. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, it was that. And then, but if I switch back to the you know the what did he said page or another page where I follow you on or Chingo follows you on, we could pull it up. So we actually have experienced that with the what did he said page. You can't tag the what did he said page right now in stories. Wow. Um, and you can't mention it in stories, and you can't tag it. I think in Ooh. photos. So, but you still can. I think mention it. No, you can't. You know what? Along with Lexit too, you can't mention even if you add it. Yeah, it won't let boys. you add it, and it's not clickable. So we understand where you're coming from big yeah, tech big, big tech a bunch of weenies yeah big time big time hey uh if, if they can't they can't tag y'all you're really under a shadow ban that's whenever you're like close to the edge right there and, e. and I, I could do a whole video series bro i never knew about this social media i call them social media thought police right i go down that little rabbit trail basically you know like 1984 that book is a creepy book 
start reading that book, y'all. Anybody out there read 1984? Mm -hmm. And man, it gives you chills because they're doing the same thing now that they were talking about in that book. It was what, the 50s, 40s, 60s when they made it. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. But me, bro, I call them the social media thought police. We duck them. And, and I even coined the phrase, we call it Magalingo. We misspell words, but man, they're even reporting your misspelled words. Wow. Like we're trying to talk in pig Latin on in IG. I call them the IG rejects. I got a little following of my people. We've been doing it for a while or since I've been, you know, on social media and we've seen the shadow banning. It's real. We've seen uh censorship, uh, Facebook jail. I mean, I'm, my, one of my accounts is in Facebook jail right now, 30 day suspension. I'm doing a 30 day bid. You know, I got multiple. I never understood it until uh, another patriot told me that you have to have multiple accounts. What I do basically is I jump around. Mm -hmm. Like I'll get it hot on one page. Boom. I got to go to Facebook. I get banned over there. Got to jump back on Nino America two, Nino America one. It's just a constant, you know, hopscotch and, and just ducking the social media thought police. My accounts are in red. Uh, my Facebook, I got a big Facebook page, but they don't grow no more. My Facebook page, Nino America is stuck at 21 K. My, my main Instagram, the main one, is that stuck at 21K. It don't grow because when they shadow ban you on, on these platforms, not only do they censor you, they take you off the Explore page and your page is not promoted. Mm. So you can no longer gain followers. Yeah. So anybody out there, if your page don't get no followers, I'm telling you, you're likely under a shadow ban. And it's proven. They've been proven to do this with computer algorithms. Mm -hmm. they, I mean, they just hit a button and yeah. kick you off and you can't even grow no more. And, and Oh. I've been a victim of that. And you know what, man? By the same token, they have the ability to make something trend. Mm -hmm. So if they want to make yep. uh, a certain month or um, a certain, certain person, a certain group of people, a certain promotion, narrative. certain narrative, a certain people. A, yeah, definitely narrative. Like, you know, you know how they, they did all these hoaxes on Trump. But uh, it, it's, it's definitely like 1984. There's like, like you said, thought police. They got double speak. And it's crazy. Yep. It's crazy how how you came up with the MAGA lingo because it's like on some street shit. And yep. ain't Cold. it ain't it crazy that that the feds probably watching indivi no, in individuals more now. Let's say they have a street pass. They probably watching a motherfucker more now on some like trying to educate people and have a, a conversation and showing the other side of the discussion than when motherfuckers is out there in the streets. Ain't that oh, some I shit? Hit, I gotta hit the button. <laughs> It's crazy because my brother, my people told me because one time I went viral one time. I've, I've, I've gone viral a couple of times. To be honest, I think I should be like at 100K on Instagram for real. Easy, but like I said, yeah. uh, needless to say, uh, I stood against BLM. They came to my city uh, and I always say three versus three, three versus 300. It was me, my big brother and, and another homie from from down the road. We went and stood against BLM when they tried to bring that crap to my city at mm. the Midland Park Mall. We stood against them and it went viral. Right. And um, but but I say that to say this, bro. Um, I'm trying not to forget my train of thought there. Mm. Uh, basically, um, then watch it. Oh yeah. That's what I was saying. My boy told me that day. He goes, Nino, we got your back. You know, in my neighborhood, I'm, I'm respected. I'm a pillar in my community, right? I'm basically, I'm basically like a street legend and I'm not trying to gloat about it, but that's just, we, we handled our business. We outlasted all of our enemies in the street and we progressed in life. But basically my boy told me, he said, Nino, we got your back. We're not afraid of BLM or Antifa. They can't come into our neighborhood. He said, but you know what really trips me out, bro? The stuff that you talk about them boys going to be watching. Yeah. And I remember my, 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 the big, the big homie told me that and I'm tripping out like, man, we're ex street dudes. Right. And we got, you know, we got stuff on lock, but he told me, I'm not afraid of these BLMers and these weenie Antifa. I'm more afraid of the, the government mm -hmm. watching you. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's like, I believe that they are watching, you know, especially on social media, mm -hmm. they watch you. And now it's a computer algorithm. Mm -hmm. They don't even got to have a person there. Exactly. They can just watch your link, your talk, your, I mean, it's, it's a trip, man. And, um, it's just really crazy. And I always compare it. You always see on my lives. I always say, you know, 1984. I always say that because it, it reminds me just of that book. Yeah, absolutely, man. Scary times, crazy times. Hell yeah. Um, when, when you started, uh, you know, I guess doing your social media stuff, um, how much backlash and what kind of backlash did you get? Well, it, it only happens online. Like I said, I, I say it in my videos too, but in my hood, I'm good. I mean, I walk down my street American flag. I go stand on the corner with my Jesus banner, my Trump flag. I'll be doing flag drops, you know, whenever I want. In my hood, I'm good in person. People love me, you know. My, 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 I'm, 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 res I'm respected and loved, and I'm well, um, you know. People, people, you know, they like me. But I only get the backlash online. Mm -hmm. So uh, it started since day one. Since when I came out with the Trump hat or came out, you know, they're just online haters, and you get a bunch of backlash, you know. And uh, it's kind of crazy because. Um, it's so much backlash. I mean, it, this politics stuff really is divisive. It even divides your family. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Friends, 
and uh, especially online because people online they have online juice. You know, they're they're online. They're tough on the internet. So Dino, they did, did you start? One. Did you start doing this in 2016, or were you doing it like leading up to this 2020 election? I no, I did this. Uh, before the 2020 election, shout out my boy Jesse with Lexit. I was a part of Lexit at first, and it was about, I want to say, I can't even give a good uh, year, but it was way before the, the 2020 election because I was campaigning for Trump all year. I've been doing it for about a good two, two and a half years, I believe, on social media. But I've been Trumped out for a lot of years, you, you know, since I think when he announced. Mm -hmm. But I went viral the first time when I went to a Trump rally in D-Town, and I had my Jesus shirt, and then I had my Trump hat, and then the way I look— they took a picture of me and it went viral on Facebook and I didn't even really know about this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'd be on Facebook fighting with other, you know, we Christians fight. I'm a born again Christian and we always fight about doctrine. So all we do is fight. Once saved, always saved. Is that right? And you know what I'm saying? Christians mm -hmm. always fighting about doctrine. So I was already used to that, right? Being in Facebook jail and, you know, getting into it. But I went viral with a picture of me at the rally and uh, I would be trumped out talking, you know, with my stuff. And Jesse from Lexit, you know, I say salute him, but at yeah. the same time, I, I kind of blame him because I didn't know about none of this. <laughs> if it wasn't for Jesse from Lexit putting me onto Lexit and telling me, hey, make videos, do this. You know, he mm -hmm. kind of showed me everything. Lexit showed me and salute Lexit. Yeah. And uh, when he pulled me into Lexit, he, uh, I was on a Facebook ban and they banned me over there and I made an Instagram. That first day I made a video and it hit like 15K in one day. I think mm -hmm. it was, I was talking about being banned. And then I went and saw Candace Owens here in my local Republican. Um, they had like a meeting and she was there and I spoke to her. So basically it was about two, two and a half years. I'm sorry for being long winded. I do that sometimes. You but go, two, and two, two and a half years I've been on the Trump train, like on social media. But I've been on the Trump train since day one. Since the day he announced, I said, you know, I, rem I remember that day. I want to say real quick. I was at the kitchen table, got out the shower. And I heard Trump talking the first time he announced. Remember that, guys? Mm -hmm. And uh, I told my wife, who is this man? Who is this man? You know what I'm saying? But I knew it was Trump. Yeah. But I had never heard a person say what he was saying on national TV, right? Basically exposing these elitist perverts, whatever they are. Globalists. And, and, yeah. yeah, everything. And when he was saying this, I was tripping out. And from that day, something inside me said, man, that's the man. So I've been on the Trump train since day one. But on social media, it's been about two years. Yeah, um, I wasn't a fan of Trump at first because I was believing the fake news. I fell for all the hoaxes. Um, you know, that, that shit hurt my feelings, dog. When he was like, <laughs> and they're bringing their problems. You know, he's like, yeah. and they're rapists. Look, I get it now. Now I get it. It's yep. like, like it, it's not they apostrophe RE. It's not their rapists. He didn't call all of us rapists. He said... They opening up their jails and they're bringing their fucking murderers and their rapists. And you know what I'm saying? And it's true. People people like to gloss over the fact that they're catching molesters, Horrible. rapists, drug dealers, killers. <laughs> it sounds like a rap song. <laughs> <'Cause> I, um, <laughs> that gets promoted. Yeah, right. Banned. That'll <laughs> that'll go trending. Um mm. but people gotta admit, like, he wasn't lying. Like El Salvador and all these countries, these presidents, they literally opened up their jails, like in Scarface, the beginning of Scarface, yep. where uh, in Cuba, they, they said, oh, okay, y'all want to go to Miami? Okay, bet. Check this out. And boom, they sent straight killers, dope dealers, and, and rapists, and murderers, and everybody. And um, so I, I was slow to come around. So yeah, man, I probably would have been one of them people too, man, talking smack. Like, Nino, man, how you going to be King, <laughs> yep. King Nobal, and, and you out here promoting this dude that... That's like the main thing that I can't get over is he called us rapists. Yeah. Yeah. It's because the, the narrative, they push that clip and people don't even understand. But I'm going to be honest, bro. You have my wife even said maybe you're, you're different. Chingo, you got family that's from Mexico. Mm -hmm. My family, bro, we're straight. I mean, it's Texas, Texas, Texas. I, mean, I don't even know where my Mexico yeah. heritage if it even comes into play. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that's what my wife said about you. That you probably have a different uh, you came to it differently because you maybe you have family from Mexico. Me, you know, I don't even you know, I don't even have family that, that are directly from there, to be honest. But uh, I want to ask you, bro, uh, what was the red pill moment for you? Like, w when was the time when you said, hey, I like this dude. I'm putting the MAGA hat on. Can you, I mean, Yeah, you for know? sure. Um, there's a, a author named Scott Adams, and he has a daily podcast. He goes live on YouTube, everywhere. And he's on Twitter, too. Y'all can follow him, Scott Adams. And he keeps it real. Like, he he's pretty balanced. And he just looks at stuff differently. And I was listening to him every day. And he would talk about how, you know, the way the media works, like the media is a business. They got to earn their commercials. You know, big pharma be paying the bills over there. 
and he and he would just explain how how narratives can be created he talks about persuasion and basically like how mass media can create a narrative how these apps can make things trend and little by little he would take like a story that was designed to make trump look bad like he called soldiers suckers and losers and then he would say what did i tell y'all about stories that have anonymous sources if you don't have like a real human being oh. saying my name is john smith and i was there and this is what he said and I, I put my name on it he's like how much faith can we really put in some of these stories and then everything from the drink bleach hoax to um the fine people hoax where supposedly he called nazis fine people he would break it down like look this is where they did the edit this is fake this is where they cut it and then once i saw that then my anger shifted towards the media because I'm like, yo, y'all been lying to us. And yep. then check this out, Nino. I stuck my neck out because I have a moral obligation. If I see people lying to my raza, lying to my people, lying to my community and playing us for dumb and we're not able to make a good choice or a good decision because we're basing all our decisions off emotion, of off yep. of being single issue voters and based off of lies that the news been telling us. Meanwhile, I'm blowing the horn saying, can y'all please pay attention to what Joe Biden is doing and what he said and what he's about, how he was against this and against that. And, you know, been in politics 50 years and racist half the time and, and locking people up. And no people didn't want to hear it. They're like, nah, man, but, you know, he's the best we got. And we got to be Democrat because we're brown. So I got to give props to Scott Adams. He He's definitely the person that red-pilled me. And then after that, I could never look at the news the same. For example, there's this show, it's a series on Netflix that Michelle and Barack Obama executive produced. It's called We the People, and it's like music and shit. Dude, if you want to get some cringe, if you want to, uh, it's like hate watch. It's like <laughs> you want to sit through some shit. I look at it. And I see it as straight propaganda. I see, I sat there and watched a couple of little clips where they're like doing songs like you got to vote and pay your taxes and dig a deep. They're like rapping and shit. And now I look at it. Now I picture. Oh, now I picture China sitting there approving it. I picture, you know, the elites and the globalists saying, yeah, put a line in about that. Like there was a little line in the lyric about uh, the amendments and they talked about the Second Amendment. They're like, and the right to bear arms. And they're like. But it was much different back then when wow. it was written. And then it showed like an urban environment, basically saying, y'all don't need guns no more. Mm. That was written in a different era. Is this supposed to be like a schoolhouse rock kind of thing? It was like a modern day, like wannabe hip, you know, you know how. Th check this out, man. I wanted to be a fly on the wall when that project came about like from the necklace uh netflix executives to who pitched it to barack and they were like man michelle and barack man y'all supposed to be like the hip urban you know you're the cool president man look we're gonna have these artists you know hit up uh john legend hit up these different people Ugh. you know what i'm saying <laughs> exactly <laughs> i'm gonna make y'all stomach turn on this episode damn I, hey, so, go ahead no I, I just wanted to say bro that's that'd be a good video to to, to tear apart and you know uh research man that's Cringe yeah, and pretty it's not wicked. a bad idea. It's, propag it's propaganda. It is, and you just touch on something. Anybody listening, y'all, listen to Chingo. He's right. Um, the CCP, like who who controls us, right? Who controls the uh, who's in bed with these politicians? It gets really deep, y'all. I mean, this is just kind of surface stuff. But once you go deep into this stuff, y'all, it's like a rabbit hole. It's crazy. But go ahead, bro. My bad. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, I was gonna. Add, is it a series? Is it a show? Yeah, it, it's it's a series. It's animated and it's set to music. <sighs> but what Nino just said is like that thought came to mind. <clears throat> I was thinking to myself. Like when I went to college and shit, I took this um, mass media communications class where we would have to break down like a slogan, like the army of one and kind of see why they took that angle to help recruit more soldiers or whatever. Well, watching this little series, I literally thought to myself, like if I did have a class, he'd be like, all right, class, today we're going to watch this. Obviously, we're going to break it down to see how it's persuasion, how it's persuasive. And how it's um how it's propaganda, in school that was that was one of the curriculums. Well, one of one of the classes I took in order for me to have a radio show, yeah. my, my hip hop show on Sunday night, I had to have a minor in communication management. So one of the classes was about like mass communication, but this particular Netflix series, I mean, I would love to just like maybe do a clip and break it down to yeah. just be like, okay, pause, look at because 
the director, the animator, the illustrator, everybody had to have input. Like, can you draw him with with a different facial? Right. Uh, for example, if we're going to have a blonde hair, blue eye person, what are we going to make them do? What song? What lyric? How are mm. we going to portray them? What gestures? <laughs> You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. all that stuff is thought through, but the average person just consumes it. Right. It's like a commercial. Always, you know, commercials hit you because you're in a certain uh, mindset. I forgot alpha, alpha wave, beta waves. I forgot what it's called, but basically a commercial, right? You think it does nothing to you, but it gets into your subconscious, mm -hmm. and they spend millions. Like you said, your class, they pour money into this research to find out how to impact people with the most small amount of time and hit you where you think you're not even paying attention, but that jingles to get stuck in your head. It's all propaganda. And the, the, the worst thing is when the government uses propaganda to fulfill their narrative and think about the worst one, I call it Magalingo. I call it the V, right? We know what that is, right? The V, mm -hmm. uh, they're pushing the V hard. That's mm -hmm. another crazy situation and an agenda that they're pushing. Yeah. But it's, it's scary when you start realizing it. And, and the worst part is all the sheep. They're mm -hmm. asleep. Yeah. And they're just they're just in it and they don't even care. And then you warn them and they call you a god of the nopal. They call you a traitor to your race. And you're just trying to warn them and wake them up. Yeah. So what you just said is like there's this book called Influence. It's a persuasion yep. book. So there's different chapters that talk about different techniques. And you can use those persuasion techniques if you're into marketing, if you're into selling. Um, and, and so I'll put it to you like this. If hypothetically, let me get my full hat. <laughs> if, <There> it is. <laughs> if, if, let's just say the um, our intelligence agency, let's just say pretend the CIA wants to um, embed stories in the media or leak a little fake story to journalists, because that's what was happening to Trump. All his Russia collusion stuff were intelligence agencies telling NBC, ABC, hey man, we got this special report. And they're like, it's the CIA, man. We already don't like Trump. Of course we're going to run with this fake ass news, right? So what we're dealing with right now is weapons grade persuasion. It's like Ooh. military grade persuasion. Hell it's, yeah. Instead of this weapon being pointed out to other countries to, to affect their elections or destabilize them, or let's say we want to cause a civil war in Nicaragua or something. Our intelligence agencies, that's their job. It's their job to go paint the leader uh, of, a, of a certain country as a dictator. It's our job to go mess up their economy and things like that well those weapons have been pointed inward now mm -hmm. now now they've taken over our media our news big tech is playing a role uh these athletes and celebrities are useful idiots uh george lopez didn't post nothing about independence day eva longoria didn't post nothing about independence day uh all eva longoria said was jumping into the long weekend and i'm like okay it's just a long weekend now kamala yeah. It's like, uh, do you guys remember uh, Chuck Schumer back when, back even before Trump was in office, like before he was inaugurated, he mentioned how, this was on Rachel Maddow's show, how Trump had picked basically a fight with the CIA, mm -hmm. calling him out on Twitter and calling him out, yep. you know, publicly about getting it wrong with weapons of mass destruction in the Middle East and so on and so forth. And Chuck True. Schumer saying publicly that if you fuck with the CIA, they yep. have a hundred different ways from Sunday to fuck with you. And that's what they did Im immediately before he was even in office. Um, did you hear that Tim Dillon episode with Glenn, Glenn Greenwald? Greenwald? Yeah. Man, you listen to them, man? Tim Dillon or, or Glenn Greenwald? I think Glenn, Glenn, Glenn Greenwald's no, a writer. Heard of him. Yeah. Okay, well, Glenn, oh, yeah. Glenn Greenwald is a writer. He's one of the like actual journalists that are left in the world. That really does investigations. Oh, yeah. He's on YouTube? Uh, well, he was. He lives in Brazil now. He uh, writes. He, yeah, he used to be a writer for The Intercept, and now he does, he does more independent work, but I don't know if he has a YouTube channel right now. Yeah, and real quick, speaking of that, I just got a strike on YouTube, right? I made a video yesterday, uh, born in the USA, and uh, last night I got a strike. Somebody reported me, but luckily I appealed it. So anybody watching, I hate to to to, to go go off here, but if you get a, a violation on these social media platforms, you can appeal it, y'all. I appealed mine, and I got it reversed. So anyway, speaking of YouTube, I'm I'm trying to uh, you know tread the waters over there myself. But yeah. go ahead, my bad. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, I mean... We know all about that. I mean, great point, man. Yeah. Uh, great point. Um, I was just mentioning uh, the Tim Dillon interview because, you know, like like Rob just said, the CIA and them, they were, they, they were hell-bent. Yeah. You know, they've they become yeah. partisan. Like, for example, you know, we ain't got to talk about all the feds all right now, but, um, you know, all this stuff, like what happened on, you know, January 6th in the Capitol, there's mm -hmm. a lot of new information, like, okay... The feds. It's y'all's job to have snitches in all those little militias. It's y'all's job to have information. So we need to know, the people, we the people, need to know, what did y'all know? 
When did y'all know it? Was this due to an intelligence failure or was this due to y'all's involvement and y'all made it happen? Y'all was setting off flash bombs, making sure it was 50,000 cameras. That way the New York Times can edit it real nice. <laughs> I think more and more of that's going to come out, right? More and more angles, more and more stories from that January 6th thing. Yeah. It might be like five years from now, but we'll get a better idea of what in p- potential in- intelligence agency had a, had a hand in that. Let, let me ask you, this, let me ask you this, uh, Nino, let me ask you this. I'm curious. Um, have you noticed from the feedback that you get from your audience and, and on social media, have you noticed a shift where people are, are coming around, like you red pilling people and they're like, hey, Nino, at first I didn't know what you was talking about, but I, now I see it. I don't know because I used to, I get the messages. I got about a thousand messages. I'm horrible at checking my, you know, because I got eight different accounts, you know, <laughs> yeah, but true, um, yeah. What I did tell my wife, I did notice this, to be honest, because you get that a lot. Sometimes you get that, them kind of messages and praise God. But now I think it's been so divisive and it's so polarizing that you're either on one side. And I don't want to say that we don't waste time. Some people have had that train of thought. You know what? It ain't no time to rep nobody no more. It's time to stand because they're taking everything from us, right? So I believe in that kind of a uh, you know, train of thought, too. But I'll say this. I told my wife, you know what? Um, I've noticed this. It's like a, a, a movement's bubbling up, like... All the patriots that are in it right now, like with you, Chingo, like we're waking up to something. And I think it's deeper and it's bigger than Trump, right? Mm-hmm. And we're basically like you being united. I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but I told my wife, I feel like something's happening that we're starting to really realize what's going on as far as the patriot circle. And we're starting to really unify. And it's like unspoken, to be honest, but we're just tired of this crap. We're tired of being, you know, treated a certain way, being censored. And I feel like... uh there is something bubbling up, mm-hmm. and, I, and I can't put my can't put a name on it, but I, I feel like people are uniting from social media to whatever with this train of thought, mm-hmm. and uh, you know I don't know what, which way it's gonna go, but I do feel it's something like that. But as far as people tell me the red pill, getting red pilled, it happens a lot. Mm-hmm. But at this point, like I said, I got the, the crew team MAGA, you know Christians over here, and we stand against darkness and the filth, and uh, you know that's just how it is at this point. Yeah. I agree with that. Don't you feel that too? Like there's something like more people, there Something's is like a, like a great awakening of sorts where people are like, man, once you see it one way, you can't see it the other way anymore. You know, what's interesting. Um, Dan Crenshaw put together this 4th of July, like pool party type of event. And I took my wife and kids and uh, we had a great old time, just a bunch of freedom loving, America loving patriots. Obviously there was no belligerent drunk people. There was no fights, no negativity. It was all patriotism. And uh, I thought to myself, I was like, huh, I wonder if it's if there's any like people on the left or Democrats that said, hey, it ought to be fun. Let's just go. And I was like, hell no, nah, they wouldn't be caught dead around all these red, white and blue. Yeah, they're also not going to pay to to attend that. Knowing that to be around a bunch of Trump loving conservatives, that and knowing that it's going to a Dan Crenshaw camp, you know, to his yeah, campaign or his organization. Yeah, they're of course. So that. it was going to be zero. Yeah. Um, yeah, not not just that the leftists, bro. They'll even do it where they don't want to wear a mask. I mean, where they mask up because they don't even want to be considered Trumpers. Even though I've seen some Trumpers mask up, but uh, you know they'll do whatever they can to to not be thrown into our you know circles for the most part. I've noticed. True. And you know, as we get to the end of this, what what's the the future of like your social media presence? Like, what are you trying to do? What's maybe the end end result or end goal for you? Man, to be honest, I don't even know. You know, thank God I'm a old, I'm a West Texas oil man. I'm self funded. I own a trucking company, so uh, that's where I make my bread and butter. I don't make no money off of this. I'm finna open a merch store. You know, so I, I don't know. I really didn't ever had a plan. Like I said, Jesse from Lexit threw me out here, and I got a, a following, and now I got a platform, and I use it to first preach the gospel, of my, of the gospel of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm a Christian, and uh, so where my social media platform goes, to really be honest, I gotta be really, I gotta be one thousand, like the kids say. Uh, I think I'm not gonna. I think I'm not gonna be here much longer. I'm gonna be banned. You know. I mean, that's that's the end of it. Maybe not soon. But look at you know all these names, Alex Jones, all these people that've been been banned. You know, I'm, I'm I'm pretty. I'm a religious zealot to be honest, and my views are considered extreme with certain things with the Bible and politics. So you know, I think to to really be honest and not not sit here and lie, I think sooner or later I'll be canceled. You know, down the line. But. You know, what I'm doing now is I'm trying to go live and, and do uh, podcasts and trying to, you know, build up the audience and, and trying to be uncancelable, cancelable, if that's mm-hmm. even a word. But mm-hmm. I got to be honest and true to myself. Or I got to be honest. And maybe I might not be here, you know, down the line as far as on social media, because if they want to take you out, they'll take you out. That's the honest truth of it. So 
where where we're gonna go from here, I don't know. I just keep dumping and pumping money into myself. I'm self funded. I don't have nobody controlling me. I'm from West Texas. They make us a little bit different out here, and uh, I'm gonna keep going uh, until the wheels fall off. You know what I'm saying? So ride or die, and that's just what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna ride it out. Let me tell you if they get me. Let me tell you this real quick too. Maybe it's just a suggestion. Uh, if you're not already, capture your audience's emails. It's it's the only way you to stay know, in touch with your audience. As an old school marketing tactic, if you can't, if you don't have their information, if you don't have their email or the phone number, if you can't get a hold of them, shoot those texts that we all get from companies or, or influencers. Then once you're gone, then you are gone. But if you have their emails, you can at least start or keep touching base with them after the fact. And then once you email them, then it's up to Google <laughs> <laughs> if they got a Gmail. It's up to Google to see if they don't put you in a junk folder. I'm telling you, that's what I thought today. I was like, you know what? I, I told my, I was walking back to my big truck to, to get done early today, and I said. Thank God they can't get into our phones yet and, and lock us out of our phones. But is that coming? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Is that the next move they're going to make? You know what I mean? Like, that's what I was thinking. Like, that's the next thing they can do to us. Basically shut us out of our communications. And what are we doing at that point? Smoke signals? You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. To me, I'm kind of a conspiracy theorist at, at heart, right? And I always think, like, man, who knows? It can get worse or better. But I believe the Bible, right? The yeah. Bible says basically it's going to get worse. It's not going to mm -hmm. get any better. So that's just how it is. Yeah. No, I think you're right because... China's already doing that. They have that social credit score. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, a lot of our elite over here, our 1% is partnered up with their 1%. And they got a little deal going Bingo. to screw over the Chinese people and screw over the American people. And that like cancel culture and politically correctness and, and uh, silencing and deplatforming, canceling. Um, that's a form of social credit score, which is like, wow, which, which, oh, yeah? yeah, in a way it is because it's like, Hey Rob, you have an opinion. You might want to be careful with that. You don't no. want to drop your social credit score and get labeled a bigot, um, you know, deep platform, shadow ban, et cetera. And the scary part is, I forget the lady's name. I think her name is Lauren Boebert or something like that. She's oh, a, the Congresswoman. Yeah. She's in yeah. Congress. She's the first person I ever heard talking about uh, shadow banning besides Andrew Schultz. And she was talking about this leading up to the uh, one of the elections. I think, I think she said that in 2018, where she was like, she walked into a big tech thing where um, I think uh, Jack from Twitter was up there in front of Congress. And she went up there yelling. She's like, you're oh, active. Yeah. She was like, you actively silencing conservatives. You silencing people on the right. Y'all are shadow banning people. And they kicked her out. Now she's like on a no fly list. Um, they kicked, oh, yeah. They kicked her off a of Stripe, I think PayPal. So they want to take people from the right. They're slowly, systematically doing it. Um, they're inching their way towards it to where they got you by the nuts. And they can basically keep you from participating in commerce meaning oh you want to yep. have a merch store rob well guess what not on our servers no yep. yep. not on our platform well hey and that man, that, man if people watching i need to pay attention this is some real real deal holy field um i have a friend that went to the Capitol on the six and she got put on the no fly list her instagram accounts get keep getting shut down because once they have your name you can't make no more accounts they get shut down uh, and then google think about it. i even heard on youtube it's all connected to your google they can shut i mean you can't even have a youtube channel if you get you know hits so many times or get banned but you're right bro uh anybody out there i always talk I always talk about black mirror and i'll say this there's a there's a uh, episode on there right that's a really creepy 1984 type vibe uh, series that I love and I talk about it, but Black Mirror, they have a show where it's basically a social media credit score where you got to be fronting. You got to be acting nice to the attendant in the parking lot because they'll just ding you right there because they have the technology to do so. And that's basically where we're at. Mm -hmm. We're living in the episode of Black Mirror right now. In China, they always say all roads don't lead to Rome. All roads lead to China. Mm -hmm. They're implementing stuff over there and they're rolling it out, I believe, over here. And we're not even talking about the land grab. Chinese, the CCP, they're, they're, they're grabbing land. They own land. I even heard this one uh, theory that the, you know, the, the MAGA hatters, we've talked about it on my podcast, that what if Cuomo, what if the East Coast and West Coast, what if they're, you know, bankrupting their states on purpose in order to bring the prices down so other countries can come in buy that at a low price. You know mm -hmm. how the game works. Buy mm -hmm. you know, buy low when it's all messed mm -hmm. up. So I'm just saying, y'all, this stuff with China, this stuff with the uh, you know, the thought police, them watching us, you might be mad at us and hate us for being tr uh, Trumpers, but we're warning you. Yeah. Right? They're banning us now, but they're gonna be they'll, they'll be banning your favorite uh influencer or, or uh someone down the line too, because it starts with us and it spreads out. Big facts, man. Let's just end it right there, man. Uh, Nino, tell them, man, tell them where they could find you. Well, well if you can't find me, my brother just said they can't find me. That, that's kind of alarming, but I'm used to it. So uh, just look me up, y'all. Nino America, 
YouTube, Facebook, and their Nino America. And I'm sure I'll pop up in some kind of search. You know what I mean? I've gone viral a lot of times and I don't just do it on, on the screen camera. I'm out in, in my, in, you know, I went against the MISD, my school board meeting. You know, I've been at, at against BLM. So I'm out in the street too with my people. So you can catch me all on social media. Just look up Nino America or Nino America and any account that you see, grab it and click it and uh, hopefully hit my link tree and you, it'll go to all my social media uh, platforms. And that's how you can find me. Just Google me or look me up on any platform. I'm going to say this real quick. Mm -hmm. Everybody talked about running to Rumble and running to all these gab. I stay and fight with the big numbers. I don't ever recommend anybody leaving and just going to Rumble and staying there. I got to Rumble, but I want to stay and fight on fi Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. I want to stay where the numbers are at, and that's what I do, y'all. So just check me out on any social media platform, Nino America. Keep up the great work. Um, I think you're going to be vindicated. All the people that were like, man, Nino don't know what he's talking about. When when it starts getting real and people ain't got no Yo. choice but to get right with the Lord, they're going to come. Amen. They're going to come follow up. Be like, man, let me let me let Amen. me uh, let me uh, binge everything he's been yeah. trying to warn us about. Wow. Uh, looking forward to meeting you July 17th out there in West Texas. Uh, and th thanks for what you do, man. Keep up the great work and, uh, and, and, and keep being entertaining, man, because the, the Magalingo and the, and all that. <laughs> hey, I appreciate it, bro. God bless y'all. Thanks for having me on. I'm honored. And, uh, and, and real quick, I just want to tell everybody, look, guys, you tried everything in life. Put your faith in Christ Jesus, what he did for you. He died for you. Put your faith in what he did. Romans 10, nine. God bless y'all. See you, Absolutely. man. Have a good day. All right, brother. All I'll right. see you on the 17th. Thank you so much. All right. Later.